Tacoma Comics here, and today I am the guy who wore the band's t-shirt to the concert. <laughs> I'm wearing my Die t-shirt from Image Comics uh, to talk about Die the role-playing game. Don't judge. Um, I backed the Kickstarter probably two years ago. It, it, it was a long time coming, long time shipping, and I you know, say that as information, not as criticism. Um, I love the idea of self-publishing DIY Kickstarters. Um, they're not for everybody, uh, but they are great for niche things where you want to directly reward the creators. And you know, there's no bigger fan of Stephanie Hans or Die than, than I am. I'm sure there'll be some people to dispute that. And that is your right. But um, yeah, let's get right into it. So Die, the role-playing game, I think I backed at like the second highest level, not like the ridiculous $1,000 level where you get to, you know, go to a party in France with Kieran and Stephanie and drink wine and play the game or whatever it was. But I backed it at the level where um, you got most of the goodies. Uh, I think my my actual dice were not necessarily like the, the top level um, colors or whatever. But, um, you know, let me just show you what, what we got. So first off... We've got the little uh, case for the die, the resin dice. Open it up. I'm speaking kind of loudly. Lid comes off because I don't have a microphone and I realized my last couple of videos that I need to speak up. So the dice are beautiful. I'll show you a couple here. Hopefully you can see that. It's kind of red and black, blood and death. Um, really, really wonderful. You've got uh, four-sided, six-sided, Looks like uh, 10, 12, and 20 sided, basically. So if you can see right there. Here's my one criticism of the entire thing. I wish that these weren't all circles, but that they were actually made more in the shape um, of the die. And that's literally the only thing I can think of to, to critique. Um, and it's kind of a minor critique. Just because they kind of wiggle around a little bit, or even if the circles were different sizes. I don't know. I feel like that's one tiny little place where we can lob a critique. Uh, this is the world of die. The world of die has 20 areas to it, um, and they all fold out like the sides of a 20-sided die. Um, so that's what that is. If you took a 20-sided die and unrolled it, or un... <laughs> it's a concept you can't really do, but you know what I'm saying. Unopened it, um, or opened it up, you would have those 20 different areas right there that are represented. Um, so that's pretty cool. The next thing I got was the Fool's Gold. One of the Paragons in Die is Neo, the Neo, um, played by Angela in the version in the comic book. And uh, they need Fool's Gold, which are these coins. And these are, you know, they're not chintzy. I've gotten some Kickstarters. I'm going to just do this. I've done some Kickstarters where the uh, rewards were chintzy. These are actually pretty darn cool. I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, so the uh, the Neo character has an AI that works to help them out, but they need Fool's Gold, um, which they can collect doing various uh, tasks in order to activate their powers. Otherwise, without it, they're pretty hopeless and helpless, which also makes it kind of fun. All right, preface. I really, really, really want to get into role-playing. I... Um, used to play Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> before I was able to grow any of this. I'm talking about a piece of loose leaf paper, um, three six-sided die to get up to 18, strength, dexterity, charisma, wisdom, intelligence. I mean, 1982, right? I'm, I'm going way back. I played with my friends. They were dungeon master at some point. I think I drew a dungeon on like graph paper, you know, lining everything out. I don't think I ever actually GM'd a game or DM'd a game. Um, but and I used to play the Elf Quest role playing game a little bit because I loved Elf Quest as a kid. But this is all kind of like I'm into geek stuff. I'm not a role playing game expert, professional aficionado. But I want to be. I have a son who's a massively accomplished DM for uh, you know for a 16 year old. Um, he's led games. He's got a podcast on D and D, um, the Dungeon Talk. Check it out wherever you can get your podcast. Uh, I produced 26 episodes during during COVID is really pretty cool. Um, he leads games at school with friends. He makes his own role playing games. Um, so I really want to be more part of this, but it takes time, it takes effort, it takes creativity, it takes imagination. 
And, you know, all those can be in more or less supply depending on the time of day and year. So this is the Dungeon Master screen. And you can see the die right there. Some really cool artwork. I assume all the artwork on the screen is by Stephanie Hans. Um, and as you do your DMing stuff down here, the screen blocks you from, uh, or blocks the players from seeing what you're doing. Okay, what I do like about this is all the information for a beginning uh, game master is written right here. Okay, it's got the um, the Neo, the Godbinder, the Emotion Knight, um, the Fool, and the Dictator. So it's got the main paragons. I'll talk about those in a minute. Listed here. Um, and this is a little thing, right? And it's got all the basic rules. Like if you don't know what you're doing and you want to pretend you know what you're doing, you just kind of peek down at this and be like, oh yeah, you have to do this to do that. And you have to roll a four. I do that. No, I didn't. I write it right here. Um, this is really small, but it talks to the construction of this overall thing. When you fold it, there's an extra space here so that it's not like crushing itself as it folds over to fold properly. And I'm the type of person who likes to keep all the stuff. Like, I know that eventually I'll lose this little sleeve. But just the fact that the sleeve is there, I appreciate. Um, and I'm pretty darn happy to have that. All right, let's get into the actual rule book itself. Or I shouldn't say the rule book. The game book. Um, comes in this beautiful slip case. Uh, very solid construction. Very nice. Uh, you know, minimalist design, which is fine. I love these little place markers for books, especially large hardcore books. And this is Die, the RPG, Kieran Gillen, Stephanie Hans. Um, really, really, really nice. And oh, it's such a delight to open it up. Um, red and black, cover page, table of contents, uh, credits listing all the extra artists that they got to work on this. Marguerite Savage, Aviv Orr, I don't know um, some of these, Tula Lotte, I know, Elsa Ch Chartier, I'm going to guess it's not Charretier, it's Chartier, Jean Ha, who does like work on Wonder Woman, they, they got all these people, like bonus people to work on um, some of the uh, bestiary models, which I'll, I'll go into briefly later, I don't want to make this video too long. Um, what I absolutely love is if you never read Die the Comic Book, they literally have almost like a reimagined issue one. And it's got people who are very different than the ones in the first comic book, except, and they all have issues that are different, but those issues can then be combined into what are called paragons, which are kind of like almost like archetypes of that issue. And so it becomes really, really, really cool this story, instead of a group of um, kids getting together for a game at somebody's house, this is a group of people um, going to a high school reunion, and somebody's trying to get them to play a game, and says, I heard that there's this one um, artifact that can bring you back to this magical world, and of course he's ordered it off of eBay, um, and then this group here ends up uh, entering the world of Dai, and so you realize right away that the world of Die is not just the comic book. That it is a world whose concepts exist. And Kieran Gillen has even said he didn't know if he was writing a comic as a companion to an RPG or an RPG as a comic to a companion or which should come first. And I think that's totally, totally legitimate um, for what this is because the actual um, game exists within the world, exists within the rules of the world, uh, kind of simultaneously with the comic or um, in companionship with the comic. So what is this game about? I'm really copying here from the wording in chapter one uh, because it's the best way. Basically, I almost get the impression this is better made for people who are in their middle years, 30s, 40s, and on. And the reason why is because you have to create a persona who has problems, right? Sorry, my wife is talking to the dogs out there. So your persona has to have problems. You have to be um, 
behind in your taxes and you're about to get closed on and lose your your uh, your mortgage in your house you're um getting fired from your job and you drink too much and you are about to get divorced from your husband um you've been hiding a terrible secret your whole life and you lash out at others in order to cover for the fact that you don't want anybody to ever find out what your secret is like you have to create a persona of a person who has some problems who has some issues right and then that person gets drawn into the world of die and what die does uh, fundamentally is it amplifies both your strength and your weaknesses so whatever problems you had <laughs> now they're bigger whatever defaults of character you had now they're bigger whatever powers you may have whatever you know attributes you may have that are positive are also amplified and so that is like how the basic um world functions in terms of your character so your persona is the effed up person when you come into die you now become a paragon just like an archetype of that person with specific rules and things and the paragons are the dictators who was Ash in um, the book, the fool, who was Chuck, the emotion knights, um, who basically use grief and pain, right, to get stronger. Um, I should say the dictators, I think is self-explanatory, you get to control people, right? Um, the fool messes things up, but can get really lucky and destroy things that nobody else can. Godbinders have to sacrifice or do something for God in return for their powers, and the God often asks for payment later when you least expect it, when you're least able to provide it. Um, the Neo uh, is the one who needs the fair gold in order to have their AI activate, and you know, they can help you locate uh, a way out of a, a dungeon or a sewer or whatever. Using the AI, they can calculate probabilities, but you have to do things in order to get that gold. Um, and then they say there's even masters. You can actually play as a game master within the game, I believe. I've only read chapter one. It's a big book, and I want to have time to digest it. I'm not trying to rush through it as a reading. I'm trying to absorb it as somebody who wants to eventually be a GM. Um, and it is easy to follow, and that does not mean it's simplistic. It means it's written really well. I get the idea that Kieran is sitting here going, I really want people to get into this. And I really want people to understand it and be able to play it and be able to make it their own and offer something back in, in return. Um, so to be a player, you only need to know the first two chapters and then to have a GM. To be a GM, you really have to know the whole thing. Um, part of what I like about this is uh, there's a lot of artwork from Die the Comic and then there's a lot of artwork uh, this is not Ash, who was the dictator in the comic. This is the dictator that they are using for um, this book. But that clearly is a Stephanie Hans die influenced um, artwork, and it's gorgeous. And if you know nothing else, the book is gorgeous. The layout of the book, the artwork in the book is gorgeous. Um, okay, this is Ash, the dictator that we know from Die. And <laughs> that fire coming out of the eyes has just been like. Uh, her characteristic that she's identified with uh i have i'm going to go through this and now like want to show you every page but i have bookmarked pages that i wanted to show you just to give you a flavor of what we're looking at so right away gosh it really is gorgeous this is the god binder using that crazy cool weapon having destroyed um, someone or something. It looks like one of the fallen. Uh, everybody who dies in die comes back as one of the fallen. Uh, <laughs> so they always exist. Uh, they can never truly go away. Uh, and yeah, it looks like whatever the Godbinder did to destroy that fallen, they're going to have to pay the gods for whatever strength they got or power they got. Um, this is really cool. So if I wanted to play this game with six of my online friends from the uh, community, YouTube, IG, comic book community, I can just uh, scan this, send them the website. They can get the character sheets. They can get all that, and I can explain to them what is going on. Um, they don't need you don't need everybody to spend a hundred bucks to buy this book, basically, which is you know pretty good because I love it. I'm 
happy for every penny I spent, but it's a lot, right? Absolutely a lot. All right, the next one is 165. I did write down the pages because I'm a dork like that. And I, I gathered this one because, again, I think this is a new illustration by Stephanie. I don't recall that one from the comic, but uh, <laughs> it's very characteristic of what she's done. The, the beautiful roses and the colors along with this dead <laughs> character there sitting and laying in the grass. I just, just love it. I love it all. And I love this close-up. You know, I've got this up on the wall somewhere, but I never looked at it this closely. Um, and especially with the inset little uh, other artwork there. Just think that's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous cover. Okay, actually something on the next page. And this one, I think, this is part of the bestiary. Um, and this is a gargoyle. And this is not a Stephanie Hans illustration and that's kind of why I chose this one let's get out of the light just to show you that some of the artists I don't know that's one minor minor criticism is I'd love an artwork credit in the bottom of this page rather than having to go back to the beginning of the chapter to see who did what because that becomes kind of annoying all right a couple more here um whew, that was really cool yeah like I could show you every page but then we would be here forever and that would benefit none of us I didn't want to put sticky notes in here because I don't want to break anything. Um, again, a non-Stephanie Hans illustration, but uh, pretty powerful nonetheless. And then one more here that I just found really humorous and I wanted to share with you. If you've seen him online doing YouTube videos or anything, um, podcast, that's Kieran Gillen as I assume the fool, maybe the Neo. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, what character he's playing there, but that's Kieran Gillen in Die. So, so far, I'm giving this uh, a 10 out of 10, despite my tiny little squibbles about uh, artist credit and the holes for the die. I really don't think that matters. Just things I notice. I don't want this to be a 100% positive view. Uh, I give another rating once I actually start trying to GM a game um, and see how that goes, but for now, I am ecstatic with this and i am super eager super super eager to uh get started let me know if you've played oh there's also a discord that i just joined um and that's hopefully going to help me as well so let me know if you've played this if you're interested in playing this i would love to get a diverse group of characters together um they go like sunday nights or something throughout the, the year um let me know what you think thank you so much